Hey everybody, KMO here. Dug out my uh, Duluth Trading Company fleece-lined shirt jack today. This is my fall uniform. It is leaf peeper season here in Vermont, or at least the beginning of it. Still a lot of green on the trees, but also some of the, uh, the fall colors are starting to come out. We say leaf peeper because uh, folks from out of state like to come in and drive around in our country highways and take in all the lovely trees changing colors. So Bernie Sanders had a heart attack. That sucks. I'm actually glad that, uh, I mean, I'm glad Andrew Yang's in the race, but I'm, I'm glad I've, you know, declared that uh, he was my candidate months ago. Because if Bernie were still my candidate, even secretly, I would be really torn about what I wanted him to do. He just got out of the hospital after having heart surgery. And he's preparing, resting up, I guess, to uh, participate in the next Democratic, you know, presidential debate or the uh, primary debate, which takes place in nine days. You know, if I just had a heart surgery and somebody told me, hey, man, we need you to go back to work in nine days, I would say, fuck you. <laughs> There's no way. But he's been working toward this for a long, long time, and a lot of people really want him to do it. I'm just glad I'm not in the position of uh, really, really wanting him to continue regardless of, you know, what it will cost him. I mean, he's lived a long life anyway. He's past the average life expectancy for a man in my country. And uh, he's certainly made an impact. He will be remembered. And he's not dead. I'm talking about him like he's dead. He's not dead. He's at home. He's out of the hospital and he's at home. Article in the Financial Times today. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read from it. Didn't take any screenshots, but it's basically about private equity firms buying up doctors' organizations and you know various, uh, basically buying into the American medical system in various ways and then just squeezing for profits. Imagine if your grandfather, let's make it your father, just fell over lying on the ground, he's not breathing. He's still warm, he could probably be revived, and I know how to do CPR and you don't. And I say to you, I can do CPR and your dad here, what's it worth to you? And you're freaking out. You're not in a position to negotiate with me. You'll pay anything. Really, anything? Half a million dollars? I know you don't have half a million dollars, but will you owe me half a million dollars if I revive your dad or try to? What are you going to say? So this uh, Financial Times piece, I guess it was an opinion piece, although there was some reporting in it, so it was kind of blurry as to which way, how I would classify it. But it basically said, look, maybe we need to distinguish between things that are valid arenas for maximizing profit and distinguish those from things which are public goods which shouldn't be exploited for profit at all costs for profit maximization this is from the financial times now i will say that the financial times is a uh, british newspaper so while they can be all pro-globalism and pro-capitalism you know they're they're in a position where they can say look Public health is a public good. It is not something which should be compromised in the quest for, you know, maximum possible profits. All right, well, some of you respond positively to the personal stuff. I just finished a course of antibiotics for this infection in my teeth. It didn't do anything clearly still have an infection there. It will remain until the teeth come out. I read another article that uh, one of the viewers to this channel sent my way about why, oh why, is dentistry not considered medicine? I mean, maybe you live outside the United States and it is considered medicine, but here it's something separate. You know, if you have Medicare or Medicaid or some other you know, assistance, obtaining medical attention here in the United States, it, for the most part, does not include dentistry. 
Unless you live in a very liberal state like New York. When I was in New York, I could go to the dentist. I wish I'd taken advantage of that more than I did. But this article was, it shared various uh, anecdotes of people who, you know, if, if they got their freedom dividend, what's the first thing they'd do with it? They'd rush to the dentist. People have been living with, you know, chronic pain. Teeth are just little pain factories. It's just these little bundles of nerves that are ripe for infection. And then there's all this swelling and there's no place to relieve the pressure. And it's just pain, 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 pain. And people live with it. You know, I went to a dentist here the last time I got a uh, really bad infection that, you know, didn't drain on its own and it was super painful. And they just treated me like dirt. One, they tried to extort me, you know, in the moment when I was in agony to, you know, to commit to several thousand dollars worth of treatment. And when I didn't, they basically told me to get out. They wouldn't do anything to relieve the pain. You know, they wrote a prescription for uh, Tylenol 3 and some antibiotics. But when I was in New York and I got this infection, they actually went in there and they, they opened up the gums and they let the, you know, the pus out and they relieved the pain. Not here. Anyway, the dentist that I've gone to recently is not that same one. The, the one that I had the really bad experience with, though, is right here in this same parking lot. I mean, it's, it's in this complex where I live. It would be really convenient if they were my dentist, but I'm never going back there again. They were so callous to somebody who was in agony. It's just, it is remarkable. <sighs> anyway, so now I, I have committed several thousand dollars worth of, uh, of treatment, and I don't have the money, so going into debt for it. Oh, debt. Don't you just love it? Consumer debt, 27% interest. And then I was watching a video today by, I guess he's kind of a... Not a self-help guru exactly, but you know somebody who is um, promoting a particular mindset in his viewers. And then I read a comment from somebody, you know, and it, he was commenting on the Black Mirror episode where a teacher took uh, an intern from you know what is apparently a fictionalized Facebook hostage and demanded to talk to the fictionalized Mark Zuckerberg, you know, or the fictionalized Jack Dorsey or whoever. And actually got him on the phone. And uh, the, the CEO's minions, you know, they were way ahead of the police and coming up with details on this guy. They knew all about him. And they noted, oh yeah, high intellect, low income, that's a recipe for anger. And I was searching for something along those lines, and that's how I got to this video. And one of the person's followers posted something to the effect of, you know, if you're not doing well, it's because you're lazy. And lazy is a vice, you know, you are morally deficient and therefore, and this is, these are my words, this is my paraphrase, this is not exactly what the person said, but, you know, it's a very familiar refrain, words to the effect of, you can make so much money in this economy, doesn't matter if it's good times or bad, if you are focused, you know, if you are dedicated to the task, you can make a lot of money. And if you don't, it's because either you don't want it, or you're just lazy, or, you know, regardless of what the exact explanation is, it's a moral failing on your part, and therefore nobody is under any, any obligation to try to help you or to even, you know, allow you to have some dignity. You know, if you're not making it, it's because you're not trying, and you are morally deficient, it's your fault, you deserve it, wallow in it. And you know, if your primary go-to explanation You know, if your primary go-to explanation for why somebody is doing well or not doing well is, you know, pointing at their own choices and their level of, you know, personal responsibility that is a favorite term of the, the libertarians, personal responsibility. If somebody is not flush with cash and doing high profile, respectable work, it's because they have made poor choices and they have fallen down in their responsibility, you know, to do the right thing at the right time. Well, how then do you account 
for the widening gap between rich and poor? Is it the result of this, this pandemic of personal failure? And if so, I mean, is that just... Is that just how the moral tide flows? There's no external cause for it? But the thing that really makes it hurt is... I know I've wasted a lot of time. I know I have pursued things that didn't pan out. I know that I have committed to things and devoted resources to things that in hindsight I should have known wouldn't have worked. But if somebody takes a risk and it pays off, they're a capitalist hero. If they take a risk and it doesn't work out, well then they're a moral failure. Their failure is their, the result of their own moral failing and it is just punishment. I mean, that's, that's the dual message we get. That's the double bind. So for the AI out there that is uh, parsing the content and the tone of this video, I do not own any firearms. I'm not planning any mass public spectacle but I'm sure empathizing with those who do get pushed to that extreme. And on that very happy note, I will sign off and talk to you again tomorrow.